This tutorial covers two major aspects of electromagnetic induction, namely Faraday's law and Lenz's law. The application of Faraday's law to a single wire and to a coil cutting through a magnetic field is used, as well as the mutual induction between two coils. I describe the basic design of an alternator and explain why the output is alternating. The well-known demonstration of the floating ring is used to highlight Lenz's law and then to explain it. But first, Faraday's law. Here we've got two small ceramic magnets held on steel plates with north and south facing so there is a magnetic field from north to south between them. If we pass a wire down between these two magnets cutting through the magnetic field, an EMF is produced, which is shown on the meter. Doing this slowly, the EMF is small, positive moving down and negative moving up. If the wire is passed through quickly, then the EMF is higher, as you might expect. If instead of using a single wire, we use a bunch of wires, then the EMF is much larger still but moving it slowly produces a smaller EMF. So here we're establishing that the greater the amount of magnetic field cut and the faster you do it, then the larger the EMF produced. If instead of cutting down through the magnetic field, we move the wire backwards and forwards along it, or across from pole to pole, then the EMF produced is negligible and in fact caused by small movements up and down, because by moving side to side, or forwards and backwards, we're not actually cutting any magnetic field. So when a conductor, such as a wire, cuts down through a magnetic field, the EMF depends upon how fast we cut through that field, that is, the rate at which the magnetic field is cut. The EMF will be greater if the magnets are stronger, if we use several turns of wire in a coil, or we move that coil or wire much faster. The mathematical expression for this is the EMF equals d phi by dt, where phi is the flux and t is the time. This is Faraday's law. The EMF generated is equal to the rate of the cutting of the flux. Since the flux is equal to the flux density multiplied by the area, then the EMF is also equal to the rate of cutting of the area times the flux density. If we use a coil of n turns, then the EMF generated is n times larger. There's a minus sign in this expression, and that indicates that the EMF generated opposes the movement that is generating it, and this is the basis of Lenz's law, which we'll explain later. It does not have to be the conductor that moves. Instead of moving the conductor, we could move the magnets. Or instead of physically moving either one or another, we can use an electromagnet. You can see one here, attracting the nail. The electromagnet is made up of a coil wrapped around a steel bolt. If we wrap a second coil around that bolt and attach a voltmeter to that coil, even though it is not connected to the first, when we switch the current on and off through that first coil, the magnetic field inside the bolt is switched on and off. This magnetic field, in turn, cuts through the second coil, into which an EMF is induced, and that is what is shown on the voltmeter. This action is the basis of a transformer, which is explained in more detail in another video. In order to produce a large EMF and drive a current from it, we need to spin a coil quickly in a strong magnetic field. That strong magnetic field is usually produced through an electromagnet rather than using permanent magnets. The coil is spun on a shaft between the poles of the magnet. The ends of the coil are connected to conducting rings called slip rings, which revolve with the shaft. Against those rub brushes these conduct the current that is produced away from the generator. To make the coil spin, an external energy resource is needed. In a power station, this is likely to be a turbine driven by steam. 
As the coil turns, the edges of the coil cut through the magnetic field. The left-hand side here moving up, and the right-hand side moving down. If an external circuit is connected as shown here, then the EMF generated in the coil will cause a current to flow round the circuit and the coil. Using an animation to study this a bit more carefully, we have here got a front view of the generator. The edges of the coil, which are represented by the lumps, are cutting through the magnetic field as the coil rotates. In this view here, the edges of the coil are cutting across the lines of the magnetic field, but in this view, the edges of the coil are travelling along the lines of magnetic field. If we connect a centre reading voltmeter to the coil and concentrate on just one edge where the dot is, we'll examine the change in EMF produced as the coil rotates. In this position, it's cutting the magnetic field quickly and the EMF is high, but as it becomes vertical, it's only going along the magnetic field, the EMF is low. As it goes down cutting in the opposite direction, the EMF is reversed. The rotation of the coil will produce an alternating EMF in the shape of a sine wave. The EMF is maximum when the coil is cutting at its maximum rate and zero as the coil edges are passing along the magnetic field. Lenz's law is really a specialised version of the law of conservation of energy. Using this coil connected to the meter as an example, when we bring a magnet up to the coil, an EMF is induced in the coil. This will cause a small current to flow. When that current flows, it will produce a magnetic field, which tries to oppose the magnet moving in. And then, when it's moved away, it tries to oppose the magnet moving away. The EMF and the current are of opposite polarity as the magnet is moved in and then moved away. If the current produced actually helped to attract the magnet in, then we would be gaining energy for nothing. The movement would require no energy to produce and we'd be producing an electric current from it. This is clearly contrary to our understanding of the law of conservation of energy. A common demonstration of Lenz's law uses this equipment. That is an electromagnet, which in this case is a simple bolt with thin wire wrapped around it couple of hundred turns in this case. Onto that bolt we're going to slide an aluminium ring. The bolt with its ring is being held in a vise and an AC supply is connected to the coil. I'm doing this outside because both the transformer and coil get very hot and tend to smoke a bit. When that supply is switched on an alternating magnetic field is produced in the bolt. That magnetic field cuts through the aluminium ring and the changing magnetic field produces a changing current in that ring. This current in the ring produces a magnetic field of its own, but it opposes the main magnetic field in the bolt and therefore the ring is pushed away from the coil and hovers above it. Moving to a final written statement of Lenz's law. When an EMF is created in a conductor, which either moves in a magnetic field or has a magnetic field change around it. That induced EMF will itself cause a current to flow. That current will then produce a magnetic field of its own and will oppose whatever change caused it. Lenz's law is in effect a special statement of the law of conservation of energy. If the change was not opposed or was indeed helped, then we would be gaining electrical energy for no input of another energy form, so be creating energy from nothing, which unfortunately is not possible. Mm -hmm.